Uh, tonight we have a very special guest. And she will be talking to and telling us about what needs to be improved as well as what exists in the world of sexuality. So these missionaries were looking at Khajurao. They were, uh, you know, discovering texts like Kama Sutra, and they they couldn't understand uh, people like us. They were like, these people are just, uh, you know, into idolatry. These people are uh, uh, not morally ethical. But you see, morals have nothing to do with it. If you demonize sex, you're going to create rage. You're going to create sodomy. That's what it has done. Because if you are afraid of some, if you're said, if you're told no, you will do it. Uh, and that, that power in a woman that says, I don't want to have a baby. I want to work. Because she's that power in a woman that says, uh, I don't want a family. I want to explore the world. Because she is that power in a woman that says, I, I, I want to have uh, sex with many partners. That's it's it. What? That, uh, I don't want to sleep with this guy with a missionary position. So God's like, okay, you're out of here. And Adam, <laughs> come here. Let me open up your rib. Here's your rib. And here I animate it. And there you have Eve. And Eve is going to bam, get into the missionary position just like that. Oh, wow. So this Lilith and Eve duality or this virgin and poor duality that we have. Mm -hmm. That's good with us. Well, you can't dress a certain way. You can't do makeup. You're a whore. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, the, the word whore and slut is used against women so much. I remember. Even, even when it comes to sex work, these men think that it is just a duty of the women because they're paying them and then there's just no give and take. So, I mean, I ask these men then, what do you expect from it? What are you going to get out of it? You know, if you're going to come with an attitude and a mind that is so close, believe me, if I were to pay for a, a, a companion, I would be excited. I would be like, you know, going crazy to meet that person and right. I've chosen that person. So I feel like it, it should be sacred that moment because a lot of good energy can be created with that. A lot it is. Of, uh, so, you know, that's, that's if men come with such a closed uh, attitude that, ah, uh, no, you know, I'm just going to pay for it. That's going to go. What are you going to get out of it? Nothing. Right. That's, that's exactly yeah that's exactly when i first came into activism for sex work that was one of my major things it's like um but since i've learned but but still i still hold on to that it, it's like um i it took me like about five six months to even get into it to begin with and then i tested it out and i didn't like going on a call and then someone just pay me and be like, come here, do this. It That felt very cheapening or something. It was, it just didn't feel right to me. And like you said, a lot of sex workers are, um, it's like a reincarnation. I totally believe that because once I went into my own self and as you see my bed and um, uh, it, it's a whole ritual. It's a whole dance. It's a whole massage. Yeah. It's just the whole thing da, 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 before you know it. Um, I have nothing but comeback um, clients because they, they, they're so entranced and they're so satisfied when they leave. It's body, mind, and spirit. And I feel good too. Exactly. <laughs> and I feel exactly. free and, and I feel natural and yeah, you know? <laughs> I completely understand what you mean. That is spiritual. Because the minute you take that task from the mundane world into the spiritual world, you give it meaning. Mm -hmm. You give it love. Mm -hmm. You give it a spirit. So, I mean, anything I do, I try to bring in that sacredness into what I do. Whether I make videos, whether I write, whether I deal with clients one-on-one. -on -one, uh, I try to bring the sacred into the mundane. 
Mm-hmm. And that's what everybody should be trying to do. So if you are paying for someone who's coming to you as a sex worker, she's, she is a sex goddess at that point, you know? Mm-hmm. Dress her up the way you want to. Uh, you know, fantasize, role play. It's exactly. endless. So that's what I uh, think. Okay, so I wanted to go a little deeper, like um, way back, back, you know, God, um, priestess temples and goddess temples. I've, I've done some research um, in Mayans, uh, with the Mayans, with the um, Yoruba or Orishas. Uh, yes. I've, got, um, I've done a little research on all this. And... Um, I come to find out that um, there's another sector that is uh, is is widely um, uh, uh, dis- disturbed. That's the where the history has um, tried to completely erase. And you know when they say gender, a lot of indigenous um, uh, civilized um not that they were and there's no none civilized but what i'm saying is that who had um structure and um infrastructure and so forth and um uh, there was a lot of even um deities who were non-binary bisexual yeah and, uh, and homosexual yes. and no one brings that up they have something seven genders right yeah yeah they there was like five like genders seven five genders? to seven genders yeah yeah i wanted to talk about that yes that is so so important because honestly by assigning strict male and female attributes can be very toxic because we are looking at this this side of the story as women, but men have to deal with this toxicity as well. You know, mm-hmm. uh, men have to deal with this this machismo that they have to put out there every single day. You know, the fake machismo, the fake I'm going to come and save you, the fake hey, I have the answers to all your questions. No, you don't. I know you can't say no because you can't even say yourself. So men are, uh, you know, saddled with a lot of fake machismo and fake uh, expectations. We as women need to let go of that. We need to stop thinking that our knights in shining armor will come on a white horse and everything will go away. All the problems in our life will go away. This is not. Relationship does not make you whole. It gives you a companion to walk the path of life with. But if you think that by some magic, you're just going to meet a guy and he's just going to put a ring on your finger and and all the problems are going to dissipate, no. You're digging a, a very, very deep grave there, if you think that. I think the women also... Uh, patriarchy has taught men and women a lot of toxic bullshit. And we need to unlearn it step by step. We need to understand that people are people. They're human above every everything else. And they need to feel sacredness in their life. They need to feel magic in their life. And my one thing to people is bring magic into whatever you do. And you will it'll never fail you. And believe me, sex work is one of the like it's the field which is open to magic. It's just open to alchemy. It's it's physical alchemy. It's complete change of your physicality and, and you're offering yourself to someone. So the offer is is almost how we take the the flower and give it in the feet of the goddess. So you become the flower for that moment. You are going in, in into a ceremony that is sacred. So I think that girls need to understand this. Guys need to understand that they are not, you know, a superheroes, a superman, or you know, just by cosplaying them, you don't become them. You are a human being having a human uh, experience. 
because you're a spiritual being in a human body. But right. this time, you're a human being. You know, exactly. you're here, you cry, I cry. You eat, I eat. You shit, I shit. You want sex, I want sex. We are the same, sister. There's exactly. no difference. There, exactly. So, and, 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 you know, there's one thing my mom says a lot. Um, some people, like, I overhear, there's this racial thing constantly. People have to talk about it. Um, we're from another country and um, sometimes we'll speak in our own language on the train or something and um, well, this one time my mom um, we were talking and then this lady says oh I thought you guys were black you guys aren't black and my mom hates that she's not into that she says come here <laughs> she goes come here you know what and then she grabbed the paper and she's and she's she grabbed the guy's hand and she says which one's white <laughs> and then he pointed at the paper and she says yes you're pe you're peach she says but listen this is what matters and she goes when that leaves your body then you are no more <laughs> she says that yeah. is what matters breath and exactly then, yeah. <laughs> yeah so um that was exactly. yeah. I, mean, I don't even know why we waste so much time and the resources on war uh when people are starving when children are dying yeah and, and let me tell you this toxicity is the reason why there is so much rape this if sex was normalized if sex work was uh, given its its credit and its right place in society, I don't think there would be so many rapes, and there would be so uh, there would be so many problems with men expressing sexuality or getting their uh, teenage girlfriends pregnant. Because mm -hmm. here, the, the men they do not even understand the 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 feminine body or the feminine organs. You don't understand it. You need to study it. Mm -hmm. Before you can, uh, uh, I tell all my clients, do you, sir, do you know your own body? Because if you do, only then can you guide someone else to pleasure you. If you don't, no one can exactly. you. Because we, we, you don't know what pleasure is. Okay, yeah, you feel, the, you feel the tingling. Okay, you feel the orgasm quick one. But you will never have that full-bodied orgasm. Mm -hmm. The conscious... Uh, Kundalini experience also. You won't have it. Because you've got to feel your body. You've got to know your body. You've got to love your body. You know? Some of our this audience... This is what we need to talk about. Excuse me, I'm sorry. Some of our audience doesn't know what Kundalini is so that we don't lose them. Can you explain to them a little bit? Um, um, okay. So the Kundalini is like, um, like the energy, the life force. It is uh, coiled like a serpent mm -hmm. at the base of your uh, spine, which is the root chakra. And once you get into spiritual awareness, the kundalini starts to resurrect. And, uh, and, and it comes up through your spine onto here, and you have enlightened. Your crown. So it's a, it's a yogi concept. It's mm -hmm. a yogi concept. It is... Uh, in you know now that a lot of people are looking at tantra and sexuality, there's a lot of Westerners that are doing this. So uh, this this Kundalini is much more than just uh, sexual awakening. It's it's enlightenment basically. Mm -hmm. It's realizing that all is one and one is all. So uh, that beautiful, beautiful. Um, so. Okay, we've covered so much. Um, they a lot of patriarchy. They say that um, the matriarchy never existed. That we that that they weren't. That that the what? But it's very evident, especially with all these architects. Uh, archi it's um, impossible. Not architects. I'm sorry. Uh, anthropologists and so forth are, are you know have found many um, many matriarchy civilizations. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yes. Go ahead. All right, all right. So uh, the thing is that um, the, the patriarchy would have us believe 
that uh, matriarchy did not exist, but it did. It did so in ancient Egypt. And even in India, before we have the full-blown Vedic civilization, culture was uh, matriarchal. Okay, uh, in Bengal, where I come from, uh, in pre-Vedic era, we had something called Shoibo Vibaho. That means uh, Shiva marriage. And in that, uh, a man and a woman could start living together and uh, then, uh, you know, just live together till the time they were spiritually compatible and then move on. Uh, what was also later on, a ton of people in India would also know as Gandharva Vivaha. That means when a man and a woman are really in love and they can look at the, the moon and they can get married under the moon. So it was like why, women were not the property of men. Women could marry other men, could move on, could do whatever. But with I think in India with the, the Vedic civilization, the Vedic culture is predominantly patriarchal. We have a lot of feminine goddesses, of course, but the tantric modality, which is you know practiced by tons of indigenous people, we have a, a huge population of aboriginal people, you know, aborigines people. So a ton of these people, they are even today matriarchal. For instance, a place which is known as Kamakya. Kamakya is uh, in Guwahati, in India, and uh, these people in Kamakya are matriarchal. So there are, uh, uh, in the Himalayas, there are tribes of women who live together, and men don't live in the same house. Men come and visit during uh, specific men and you know, no wives or husbands. They come and visit. Uh, if, if there's a tete-a-tete -tete with a woman, she'll invite a man and he'll come to be with her and leave. The, the women control the money. The women control the children. And women control reproduction. So you see how this, and, and they, they have no disease, have no problem, no divorce, they have no issues. And, and these women are... Uh, uh, I think somewhere near Rishikesh, they're beautiful. And some of them have when they're 68. So they don't age the way that we do. Okay. Because of the food they eat, the organic food they eat, you know, because also in Bhutan, if you look at Bhutan, Bhutan was a, a very powerful uh, matriarchal society. Look, the whole country is organic. Oh. Organic. Food, agriculture, this is feminine. Women control food. In India, most of the, the farmers were women. It's a very, you know, 50-year-old, 70-year-old thing that men became farmers. Farmers were women. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you keep the food, you control the food source. The men realize that. You control procreation. You control food source, you control them. You mm -hmm. control menstruation. If you are a menstruating woman in India, you're not allowed to go into a temple. Some uh, places like Nepal, you cannot enter your own kitchen if you are menstruating. So this is something that's very important, understanding the sacredness of the menstrual blood is magical. It's interesting, to, to you know. That's, that's very interesting because in Mosquitia, you can't. You, you, you. That, that's one of the things. Um, yeah, that, that is one of the things that the woman can't go cook when she's on her menstruation. <clears throat> Where my mom is from, yeah, yeah. Also, also, they um they carry the the la the last name of the mother. Not the father. Yeah, right. Exactly. So this is this, um, you know, recognition of, and why shouldn't the last name of the mother? Because the mitochondrial DNA comes from the mother. And about 60 to 80 percent of the DNA is mitochondrial DNA that comes from the mother. So the line is not carried on by the male, it's carried on by the females. 
exactly. as science tells. We are all female till about six weeks when the gen switches and some have the XY chromosome, they become males. Mm -hmm. And they also say that in a few millions and in some millions of years, there will be no males because the, the redundancy of, of, you know, having a penis, it's going to be redundant. You don't need a penis anymore. We've got IVF. Oh. And now society is going to change a lot. And with the integration of tech, I don't even know how we are going to, uh, as a society, come out of this. All I can say is we have to be more humane towards one another. Mm -hmm. Stop looking at binaries all the time, male, female, black, white, day, night. Stop <laughs> that. It's a time to really think of why you are here, what you want to do with your life, how you can be a better version of yourself every day, how you can do what you're here to do and make money and be happy. And, you know, why not? Uh, think of things like this instead of now COVID has shown us that just by thinking that I have a job 9 to 5 I'm gonna survive no you've got to now really think of what you want to do and who you are because with the AI becoming as smart as it is becoming mm -hmm. a ton of human beings are gonna lose their jobs mm -hmm. so if they do not adapt they, but what the AI doesn't have the creative solutions, the emotional quotient of it all. That is what we are bringing to the table. Yep. The the human AI integration, it's, it's going to happen. Whether we like it, we don't like it, we hate it. So I said that, you know, we have to uh, stop looking at binaries. We have to come up with a, a more humane side to the story, identify with one another, love one another, respect one another, uh, protect uh, people. Like, you know, why should sex work be so dangerous? You know, why should I have these girls who go on um, sites like Seeking Arrangement and they meet these guys? And they're like, you know, it's so unsafe. Yeah. The, whole, uh, the whole thing of, you know, and the way they even talk to the girls, it's like they're cattle. They're sure yeah. they're big girls, so they're sure that, and then they're so insulting. Oh, you're too old, or oh, you're too this, or you're too that. You know, it, it, it's not safe. No. So that's also another component that I have. I have personal experience with my girls, and I've seen a ton of them feel unsafe on these websites so there has to be uh, a way that we can streamline all of this there has to be a way that we can provide support now that the COVID has happened what are these sex workers going to do what is the new norm for them what is the new way for them exactly. you know, how, will they, how will they progress ahead what's going to happen now you know, hotels are still not open here. Men are still not going to be booking these girls. We've got to, I think, uh, the community as a whole, educators in the community, mm -hmm. uh, people who are interested in uh, helping in this this avenue, this uh, particular field. We, there has to be a streamlining of all of this information. You know, productive, uh, on a, I, I mean, on a global scale. I don't mean just in America or just in uh, Europe. I mean on a global scale. Mm -hmm. We need to sort of uh, have an online support community, something that can uh, support. Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, we have to, the, the, the beginning here is what we're doing. And that's, um, you, you're doing your part, I'm doing my part. And um, yeah. yeah, we can, I, I would love to come together and, and see if we can create something um, yeah. for uh, for our sisters and um, and 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 the feminine and and all those who are under um, duress and uh, and, also, and also do something for men because of their and also do something for the men who are booking these girls. So we are looking after the customer. We are looking after the girls, and we need to educate them on how they can you know, 
become exactly. more yeah and like you said stop demonizing um stop, when we stop demonizing sexuality Love is normal it's yeah. just like any other job it's it's uh, uh my girls that i know are just like any other uh, girl who's a writer who's a journalist and just like them they're very intelligent most of them uh they are very sensitive in fact there's another good collaboration for you is um uh, there's a, a a lady who is an escort and she writes writes a blog and uh, she's like into philosophy and a ton of such things we need to find women like this yes and who, we will this is the start we can we <laughs> can come together and and uh work in in a systematic mm, way to streamline all of this information to help uh make sexuality a normal and healthy part of uh, our spiritual evolution exactly only when we realize only when we realize that uh sexual energy is spiritual energy that is when true change will happen believe me if we think oh my god uh, this is something that i need to be ashamed of or this is something i need to be uh you know i need to just watch watch some porn and and just wank off and that's it it's not going to be healthy for you it's not going to be healthy for your wife because you know most of these men are married and in return they're not only are they not pleasing the wives they're they're just bogus husbands so going to a sex worker can also mean you are uh, working on your skills as a lover which i think most men need to do no, we need we need to take we need to teach the sex industry also um yeah yeah also because it's so it's, one point it's only the the sex industry porn what they call porn and stuff it it depends what 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 it is because right now because of the times we live in and in the environment we live in um this is the evolution which is not a, you know evolution means something of progress i don't even know how to how to call it but the the degradation <laughs> or not the degradation basically because i i don't i don't feel there's certain porn that's absolutely just not acceptable to me um but there's other stuff that is art that is sexuality that is you know it's fantasy but there's yeah, other, yeah but there's other things that just have no no place there um but what i'm saying is but it is the product of the societies we're living in because that's how they view sex and that's how they view the female and so we need to teach them that that's not really you know that's not that's not the connectivity uh, this sexuality. needs to be written about honestly uh we need to come up with an idea to raise funds because this needs a blog that needs to be updated every week this mm-hmm. needs videos regular videos that need to come out from educators like you me we need a panel of at least 7 to 10 ladies like us yes. who would be creating content on a regular basis okay. so i have one video this week you have one video that week she has one video okay. she has one video five women together say we get exactly so we take out one video a week mm-hmm. small videos don't have to be huge small videos educational Mm-hmm. we then we need to start online workshops okay where sex workers we have a separate workshop for sex workers we have a, a separate workshop for men okay so we need to come up with a concrete way we can execute this okay because it's it's one thing talking about it it's another thing streamlining all of these ideas putting them down putting them on writing to see okay this is what we need this is the topic this is the target this is the week. this is our, our work for the week okay you know i saw your foundation i saw your foundation <laughs> i went on your i liked your facebook page and i subscribed to you too oh good and i subscribed to you i'm going to go to your me. facebook please find me on facebook and i will so we can uh start talking about these things okay. even on facebook You know, okay, and I'm gonna, person. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put this up here, and I'm gonna send you a copy of this, um, of our interview. So, um, so, 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 so,
and I'm going to ask whoever's watching um, if they'd like to be a part of our panel. Um, the only thing is that you have to have some, um, well, you have to have some kind of experience in the industry, and um, it's we are asking for pro. Um, destigmatized people not we can't um although sometimes i think it's good to always have an opposite there because it shows us you know we can feed off of yeah that. we need we need someone who we need a doctor of course mm -hmm. because we need these girls to understand the medical implications of everything after covid we need a doctor who will be able to tell us that okay what is the situation post covid what is safe for the girls what is not safe Okay. We, I don't know. You don't know. We don't know. We need a doctor. We need uh, sex workers. We need educators. We need feminists. We need everybody. We need the the uh, uh, a sex worker who is not educated. They're full of them in Kamathipuram here. I've gone there. If you ever come and visit, I'll take you. We can do some really interesting work with these people. Yes, you I know? would love to. Yes, that's right. I accept the invitation. I'm coming, but not 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 when this thing is over. <laughs> That'd be nice, you know, if we could do something for women like that, because we are not just targeting the educated uh, sex workers. We're targeting everyone. Right, like, but everyone, everybody has something to put into the uh, into the pot. That's the other. Yeah, that's the other and thing that, 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 that's, that's with our world. Everyone, once this gets streamlined, trafficking will decrease. Yes. Human trafficking. We do, you don't understand the implications of uh, regulating this industry. Rape, child uh, victims, girls who are being kidnapped, taken and sold into prostitution. Mm -hmm. We need to stop that. Mm -hmm. So we need women from all over with, to come with this idea that it's not just American for sex workers. We are looking at English. That we are looking at every single girl. Exactly. Indigenous, Indian, Pakistani, Bangladeshi, Swedish, uh, East African, um, East Africa, West Africa, uh, East Europe. So many girls from there, Romania, Slovenia, you know, so we need yes. to, it's, it's, it's like a foundation. This work is a foundation. Yes, it is. And, and we can get it done. I really feel we can. I really yeah. do. And I, I think we can get something started and leave a legacy for someone else to continue. Yes. And, and yes. now with GoFundMe and with Patreon, we can raise money. Okay. So we can literally raise money for projects. And who yes. knows if somebody could fund us. And yes. once we get the funding, we get on our asses and we start doing the work. Exactly. And we can. And it's about empowerment. Yes. It's not about shaming. It's not about, um, it, it's not about laying blame. It's about empowering us it, as females. Uh, it's about empowering non-binary people and anyone else is, 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 is marginalized. It's about empowering people and teaching the teachable, as long as they're not sociopaths or, 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 or psychopaths, they can learn and change yeah. their attitude towards sex, sexuality, and those people in it, and those people's yeah. choices. Because it's not just about sex work, it's about people's choices and, and yeah. people's preference and people's yeah. attraction, because not everybody's attracted to the same thing. And it's not, right. it's, it's no one else's business but that person who is joining with the other person or the other persons um that's their life you're not in it if you're not in it if you're not in it so why are you so perturbed by it why are you so bothered exactly. by it exactly <laughs> you've got to remove the stigma of uh this this whole thing it's it's really time i think i think it's really the new kids are not gonna be have the same heteronormative binary. I have a lot of hope that things are suddenly going to change and, you know, this will become regulated, normalized. It won't be so unsafe. Exactly. That is what gets me, you know, just the, just, just this, this whole thing is so unsafe. So we have to bring safety to our daughters, yes. to our uh, girls. We yeah. have to bring safety. To me, that is the, the most important thing about 
they, they have no support they have no help they have no one to go to police will not listen to them right so i mean right so we have to so okay when no one helps it's 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 like um it's like this no one's helping then you have to help yourself and we need to stop yes. looking we need to look to if if no one around us or the the structures or the institutions that are around us are not helping us we need to stop putting other people on pedestals and put ourselves on pedestals and look to the divine for help because it's there if yes. we don't ask it for help it doesn't bother us <laughs> it doesn't fool with us but we have to have that strength and that belief and believe in that divine and that it's going to help us and we can come sure. together and you know yes we've got to do it and we so, are uh, we've got everything it's done <laughs> damn it <laughs> okay meeting you and it was wonderful Jackie. meeting you it was wonderful yes. meeting you it's, but it's we're gonna meet again and we're gonna do this this foundation yes. so um yeah i would love to do that let's okay. make a video let's make a video on my channel as well okay something we both can talk about and uh yeah i wanted you to you can do my chart if you want to oh yeah i'd love to do that <laughs> cake <laughs> send me our uh, birth date I will. Time, day, name okay. and I'll give you a small report I'll let you know all okay, right cool and all right and, um, can you please can you please let our audience know um where they can find you please I'm gonna also put it in in words yeah, but I'm, yeah. so uh, I'm on, I am on my website www.tinahills.com and I'm also on YouTube please subscribe uh, I'm, I'm like you know really desperate to get my subscriber account up but I'm not boosted it once and I've just been organically letting it grow and uh, seeing how what works what doesn't work so let's see uh, of course uh, social media handles like Pinterest LinkedIn or Tina Hughes and check out my blogs please Okay, I'm. I'm make sure I put um all your information. I've got. I've got writing on um sacred sexuality. I've got a ton of writing on sex actually. So, okay. so your blogs you know. are your blogs are on your on your on your website, right? Yeah. Okay. On my channel, on my website. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and put those up there. Um, thank you for joining us. And um, this was wonderful, and it's going to continue to be wonderful. We're looking, yes. yeah, we're looking for uh, for fellow uh, fellow supporters, allies, yes. sex workers, um, doctors who are pro or yeah. um, who are pro sexuality. Basically, it's not yes. just pro sex work, but pro yes. sexuality for us to come out of the dark. Regulating and, everything, normalizing everything destigmatizing everything just getting back to normal like you know from right. all this for hundreds of years of toxicity can we finally now move to healing yes okay well thank you so much don't forget yes. to subscribe to both our channel <laughs> and um, yes. thank you <laughs> I, I subscribe to yours. I subscribe to yours. Yeah, and I subscribe to her. As you, you, so yes. hey, your turn. <laughs> All right. Okay. Bye. Bye. Please bye. find me on Facebook, though. Find me on Facebook, though. I'm gonna so, do it right now. I'm gonna do it right now. Okay. Perfect. I sent you a bye. present. <laughs> bye. Bye, bye. Bye, sweetie. Yes. Okay. Bye. Bye. Hey, it's Kiara. Thank you for uh, tuning in. Um, we'll have more next week. Please don't forget to subscribe, follow, like, and um, get in contact with me if you want to be on the program. Um, it doesn't matter day or night. I'm here. It doesn't matter what country you're in. She was in India. And um, I got up at two o'clock in the morning and got over here so that we can do this. Uh, it's important to me that we all start waking out of this darkness and um, anti-sexual, anti-human, anti-human, yeah, <laughs> relationship we have with ourselves and with others. 
uh, thank you very much for tuning in and I will be back next week. Thank you so much. Bye.